There's a crucial blood test that should be measured at least once in someone's life, but most people have never heard of it, and it's not routinely measured when you go to your doctor for a checkup. The common tests that you'll get is a full blood count, kidney function, general cholesterol panel, HbA1c for sugar levels, ferritin for iron, and then B12 and folate. Now, you may have a few other things checked, such as liver function if you're overweight and your doctor is concerned about fatty liver, or if you're feeling fatigued, then your doctor will often check thyroid function. But those are the general blood tests and most people would call it a day, but we're missing a crucial measurement. And no, I'm not talking about things like vitamin D levels, omega-3 index, or heavens forbid a DNA methylation clock. No, I'm talking about a specific test where if you've got a high level, you've got a three to four times higher likelihood of a heart attack, a three-fold increase in aortic stenosis, which is a narrowing of one of the heart valves, and a 1.5-fold increase in cardiovascular death rates. And for most people, we only need to measure this once because it's primarily driven by our genetics. So the levels remain stable throughout an individual's lifetime, regardless of their lifestyle. I am, of course, talking about lipoprotein A, or LP little a. Lipoproteins are the vehicles that carry cholesterol around the body. And when it comes to lipoprotein A, we've got observational and genetic evidence that strongly support the conclusion that high lipoprotein A levels are associated with cardiovascular disease, aortic valve stenosis, cardiovascular and all-cause death rates. I want to emphasize that the evidence is extremely robust. We've got large-scale studies that look at genetic variants, so for the people that have got a particular set of genes that cause them to have high levels of LP little a, those people have much higher rates of cardiovascular disease, and imaging studies further reveal that lipoprotein A initiates inflammation in the blood vessel walls. So we've got strong genetic information, and when we image the blood vessels we can actually see lipoprotein lipoprotein A causing problems. So we must absolutely measure lipoprotein A and that is in keeping with the European and USA guidelines. And when we measure it, we ideally want a level below 50 milligrams per deciliter. Again, the levels of lipoprotein A, they're primarily driven by our genetics. It's not particularly influenced by our lifestyle choices. Apart from if people start taking growth hormone, then lipoprotein A can increase by two to three times. So please don't do that. Now the good news is that 80% of us will have a level below 50 milligrams per deciliter. But what if you're part of the 20% of people that have got a high level of LP little a, and I'll share with you my LP little a level shortly. But before I do, I just want to mention that I've added a separate blood tests module to the 5 years younger online program that all patrons get access to. Plus, if you sign up to the powerhouse support level and above, you get access to the discord server, where you can connect with me and other members as we share the latest longevity research and answer questions. Proceeds go towards funding the rapamycin clinical study. Currently, there are no specific treatments to lower LP little a. Like I mentioned, it's not really influenced through lifestyle choices. So in the absence of specific lipoprotein A lowering therapies, the European Atherosclerosis Society recommends early intensive management of other risk factors for individuals with high lipoprotein A levels. So this includes things like focusing on a great diet, exercising regularly, prior prioritizing sleep, making sure that your blood pressure and blood sugar levels are controlled, no smoking, and lowering LDL cholesterol. Because we've got very good evidence that if we lower LDL cholesterol, we can mitigate the risks of a high lipoprotein A level. Overall, we need to individualize the care and make sure that we're doing everything possible to lower someone's chance of heart attacks. So in terms of cholesterol-lowering medications, we've got PCSK9 inhibitors. And in the trials, this class of medication did lower the lipoprotein A levels. However, these medications are not registered for lipoprotein A lowering. When it comes to statins, statins may actually cause a slight increase in lipoprotein A levels. But statins should absolutely not be discontinued because the cardiovascular benefits in patients with high lipoprotein A levels, they far outweigh any potential risks associated with the moderate increases in lipoprotein A levels. Essentially, the benefits of statins, they far outweigh the risks. In terms of specific medications that can and lower lipoprotein A levels, there are some early trials that are showing some very promising results, so hopefully in a few years time, we will have a medication that we can use to lower lipoprotein A levels. And just by the by, niacin, which is a form of vitamin B3, does have some lipoprotein A lowering effect, but niacin is not used for that reason in clinical medicine, because the studies show that niacin does not lower the chance of heart attacks. Personally, I use niacin to support my NAD levels, which is entirely separate to lipoprotein 
lipoprotein A. Recently, I paid for a test to measure my lipoprotein A levels, and it came back as 93 milligrams per liter, or 9.3 milligrams per deciliter. So I'm one of the lucky ones that doesn't need to worry about my lipoprotein A levels, and chances are I won't need to measure it for the rest of my life. My advice to you is that before you start spending money on things like vitamin D levels or DNA methylation clocks, none of which are recommended by any medical society, I highly recommend that you test your lipoprotein A levels, because this is a test that the clinical guidelines actually recommend, but most people never do. For me, it cost $60, and if you are going to spend money on any blood test, I highly recommend that you start with lipoprotein A. And if you do want to find out about the optimal diet for human health, make sure to check out this next video here. A massive thank you to donotage.org for their $10,000 donation to my rapamycin study. They are a health research organization, and to benefit from their ingredients as well as a 10% discount code, check out the pinned comment.